It is great to be back together and to have spent the, an hour in with God's Word with, with small groups. Um, if you've not had a chance to go to Sunday school, um, we just started again um, for the first time in about a year, and I've seen folks I've never seen. And I actually, when they were eating a biscuit, I actually saw what their face looked like. So that was, <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. Um, so you join us next week and plan on being here at Sunday school is at 945. And we have um, fully graded Sunday school for every age group and men and women's class and couples classes and children's youth. So uh, we look forward to you joining us um, as God sees fit for you. We're going to continue our time. Thank you, Don, for bringing us into the presence of God in such a worshipful way. Let's continue our time together as we read in Scripture. Let's stand together as we read from God's Word. The words are printed for you in your bulletin or on the screens. Reading together. Fear came upon me and trembling which made all my bones shake. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and I am not silent. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, how great. Uh... 
At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I Thus might I hide my blushing face while Calvary's cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt my eyes to tears. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. sin, who do no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and buried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed redeemer. Thank you for sinners, 
the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. All my hope is in you. All my hope. As we gather to worship today and pray, uh, we have several who really need our prayer uplifting today. I want us to remember uh, Glenda Frazee had surgery this week, really serious surgery, doing well. But let's remember Glenda in our prayers. Shirley Bayrath, as you know, terrible car accident and are still worried about whether they're going to save that left arm or not. Let's remember Shirley, her husband, and Ricky. Let's also remember Bill Smith, who had surgery and several who are facing uh, surgery, Nick uh, Angeloni, uh, Stacy Whittington, George Whittington had a stroke, by the way, let's remember him. Misty Cosgrave's facing some surgery. Uh, let's remember uh, uh, Shirley Souter taking cancer treatment, just a whole lot of folks here. Jody Smith came home from the hospital. Let's uh, thank the Lord for that. So much to thank God for, to seek God for. And I want to just say thank you to those who came to Sunday school today. What a great morning it was. The biscuits were fantastic. All right, amen. <laughs> Let's uh, thank the Lord for a great morning. Join me in prayer, would you? Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. The name that's above every name, Lord of all. And Lord, that means that everything we need, you have. Everything we need is found in you. And as we gather today, I know people come here for all kinds of reasons. May they find today in this church what they need in you. For those who come broken, give them restoration. For those who come weak, give them strength. For those who come weeping, give them joy. For those who come with doubts, birth brand new faith. For those who come feeling shame, Give them freedom. And for those come with a burden that's heavy, give them rest. For you said, come unto me, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Minister your truth. Override in our heart every worry that we carried in the front door. And let us lay everything at the foot of the cross, at the one who took death for us and rose again. May we go through that open door which he opened on Calvary and walk in heavenly places today in this church. And so, Lord, open your heart to us as we open our hearts to you. And I pray, Lord, that you'd send your Holy Spirit to bless in this meeting and that you would be Lord of all in this place and Lord of us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I do hope that everybody gets involved in Sunday school, and, and uh, we had some, some great meetings here this morning around our, our facility, and uh, I'm excited. We'll start back next week. I'm going to miss 10 o'clock worship, but I'm glad we're back at 11, all right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're back at 11 o'clock. Let me remind our church members we're having church conference this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Don't forget that. And uh, praise the Lord, we're going to have communion Easter Sunday morning. 
and we're having a 6.30, Easter Sunday, we're having a 6.30 sunrise service at the cross right here in the graveyard. Uh, have a 6.30 sunrise service. We're going to have a 7.15 breakfast, an 8.30 worship service, 9.45 Sunday school, 11 o'clock worship service, and I'm going to sleep all afternoon. <laughs> That's guaranteed. But uh, bring your family out. We're going to have a great service. We're going to have communion in 8.30 and 11 o'clock service. You'll want to be here for that. Uh, as we remember what Jesus did on the cross, and we're leading up to that now, as we are studying in these days uh, what Jesus had to push through to go to the cross. He had to push through rejection. And some of you teenagers, you know rejection. I knew rejection. He had to push through that rejection to get up to Calvary's hill. Today we're going to look at fear. He had a terrible fear. On the Richter scale, it was 10.0. He was so afraid that blood popped out of his forehead. The first blood of the cross of Calvary was not on the cross. He was in the prayer garden. That's where he bled first. He was already bleeding before they started beating him. And he did that in prayer. Today we're going to look at how he overcame fear and how today we as believers and followers must do the same. Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning.
In the Word of God, let us turn to Luke chapter 22, verse 39 and through 44. Luke chapter 22. Have you ever spent any time considering how much fear is in your life? Think about it for a moment. In the course of a day, how many times have you done something or acted in a certain way because of fear? Every day is full of fear. Ann Landers, at the po height of her popularity, got 10,000 letters a month. She said that the majority of the letters dealt with fear. And by the way, what's the number, Gallup did a poll, the number one fear of Americans. Do you know what it is? Snakes. <laughs> the only good snake is a dead snake. Amen. Every snake is poisonous. Every one of them. Fear. How many fears? Why are Americans buying so many guns? Fear. We're afraid of losing our health. We're afraid of losing our, our freedom. And boy, that's a big concern now. We're afraid of being called a racist. Let me just say this. Somebody posted it this morning. Apologizing for the Color of the skin you were born with is telling God he made a mistake. If God gave you that color, that's the color God wants you to have. Don't be afraid of being called a racist. We're afraid of being a burden to our children. We're afraid of COVID. I know people have had two COVID shots and they're still scared. Let me tell you something. If you've had those shots and it's been a couple of weeks, you're good to go. Stop being scared. Imagine what our soldiers have, to, the fears our soldiers have to overcome at Fort Bragg every time they jump out of an airplane. Why somebody would jump out of a perfectly good airplane, I don't know. But they do. Bless their hearts. They have to overcome fear to do that. We have fear in our homes all the time. I've got to tell you this story. Years ago when my son was just a little guy, he got sick one night, and they always get sick in the middle of the night, don't they? And uh, I had to race out, didn't have any medication, get something to bring his temperature down. I was going to, I told Brenda, I said, I'm going to go to the quick stop, race in and get that medicine, and race out. And uh, it was like 12 or 1 in the morning, 2 o'clock, I don't know when it was. She said, no, you'll get killed, something will happen. You can't go out that late at night. Something will happen. I said, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to get out of the car, run in and buy it, and be back in the car five minutes. Nothing will happen. She said, we're going. She got that sick little kid, put him in the car. I guess she said, if you're going to die, we're all going to die together. <laughs> so there you are. We get in the car. I go up to the quick stop. I pull in the quick stop. Put it in park. Suddenly, to my right, Two cars rush in. The guys get out of the car and start a fight right beside us. <laughs> Suddenly, police car pulls in, and the policeman gets right in the middle of it. And this is the worst part. My wife is sitting there with her arms folded going, <laughs> Don't you hate those I told you so moments? I hate them. But she nailed it. Listen, I want to tell you how we're to live. If you can live today without regrets and tomorrow without fear, you've got victory in Jesus. Because our Savior Jesus Christ, he didn't live with regrets over yesterday and he didn't live with fears over tomorrow. And if you think about it, think about what fear has done. Israel was commanded to cross the Jordan River, but they were afraid. Oh, we're grasshoppers. We can't do it. They spent 40 years in the wilderness because of that fear. What a shame. Parable of the talents. Remember the guy who took his talent and buried it, and the master came back and said, 
how did you do anything with my talent? He said, I was afraid. Fear. And he lost it all because of fear. Peter was warming his hands by the wrong fire. Oh, weren't you one of his followers? Fear caused him to deny the Lord three times. He was walking on water until he got scared. Fear will sink you every time. It unnerves us. And I want to tell you something. Our politicians are using fear to control us in this country. And we got to stop it. We've got to learn how to be a fearless people again. Now let's understand that something about fear. There are three kinds of fear. Write them down. Three kinds of fear. Three dimensions to fear. First of all, there's harmful fears. Fear is wrong when it paralyzes us. Fear is wrong when it cripples us. Fear is wrong when it limits us. When you're fearful and skeptical or cynical or selfish, listen, Goliath came out there taunting Israel. And nobody would go out and face Goliath because they were what? They were afraid. That was harmful fear. I think of another kind of fear. Well, let me just say this. If fear keeps you from your potential, if fear consumes your mind and it wastes your energy, it is a wrong kind of fear. The disciples ran when Jesus was arrested out of fear. And Jesus said this, in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. It's a sign they don't have the Lord. That's harmful fear. Second, there is helpful fear. Healthy fear. fear. Those are, God gave us protective mechanism, an alarm system. We tell our kids, don't we? Nothing good happens after midnight. Who's ever said that to your child? I see those hands. Boy, we have, mine's 21. I still tell him that. Speeding cars. There's healthy fears. Protective fears. Then third, there's holy fears. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 10. And I want to tell you something. We're living in a country that has lost its fear of God. Folks, look around. People don't fear God anymore. He is a holy God. And we need to fear a holy God. And by the way, let me just say this. Which is more foolish? Which is more foolish? A child afraid of the dark or an adult afraid of the light? We're living in a land where people are afraid of the light of Jesus Christ. And we cannot continue in land without that we've got to learn how to live with every day without regret and live every tomorrow without fear Isaiah 43 10 says I have redeemed you I have called you by my name you are mine we are to be courageous people not a cowardly people by the way I got to tell you this pastor I know said that he got scared and did something stupid uh, well, pastors do things stupid all the time. You, not, you don't know it. We just don't tell you. I, I tell you about other pastors, not me. <laughs> but he said he was speeding and got caught. He said policeman pulled him over. He said he knew he was in trouble. And he said he was scared him to death. Policeman knocked on the window and he said, I lowered the window and instead of handing him my driver's license, I handed him my visa card. He said, I was lucky that I didn't get taken to jail after that one. By the way, ladies, don't hand them your visa card, okay? <laughs> you see, when you're scared, you do crazy stuff, don't you? Jesus was scared so much. For some reason, he said, Father, take this cup from me. Blood popped out on his forehead. Before he went up Calvary's mountain. And to get up that mountain, he had to press through fear. And if he pressed through fear, we should too. By the way, teenagers, I want to say especially to teenagers, I know that being a teen is tough. 
But I know that being rejected by others and being fear of being different is a fear of our teenagers. Don't be afraid to be different. Somebody came up to me last week in this church, hadn't been to our church before, been to a lot of these more modern churches for years and grabbed me by the tie and said, I hadn't seen one of those in church in a long time. I said, I, I bet every preacher you've heard the last couple of years been wearing blue jeans and a shirt tail out, haven't you? He said, that's right. Well, I'm not afraid to be different. I'm wearing a tie. Don't be afraid to be different, teenagers. Let's look at what Jesus did with his fear. As we look at this scripture today, let's look at Luke chapter 22, how Jesus handled fear, and let's learn how we are to handle fear from it as well. Let's see what Jesus did. Scripture says, and going out, and coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. Now, he had already had communion with them. He went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may enter, may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down, prayed on his knees, folks, and prayed, saying, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, the severity of what was going on in his heart, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It's obvious. He had some fear going on. But was Jesus afraid of death? No, that wasn't the fear. I don't believe Jesus' fear was a fear of death. I believe what he feared was failing the Father. The Bible says Jesus became sin for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He's about to experience something he's never felt before, sin. And I wonder if he's worried, concerned, will I make it? Can I take it for the Father? And sometimes, folks, we have to take things for God. So how did he do, what did he do as he was consumed with his agony? Four things, that he, five things that he did. I want you to notice, this is what we're to do. How did he master it? How do we master it? To overcome fear, first of all, bend the knee. Notice it said that he got down on his knees, bend the the knee. He prayed. Someone said this, when they bind your hand, bend your knee. When Satan binds your heart, bend your knee. When the flesh binds your hands, bend the knee. The first blood of Calvary was from bent knees. He prayed about it. Put it in God's hands. Get on your knees, put it in God's hands. Now, I read how to do that this week. I, I, I read across uh, the story of a missionary to China back when the communists took over China. Her name was Isabel Kuhn, K-U-H-N. She had a son by the name of Danny, and when the communists took over their area, they became refugees and took flight. Isabel said, we headed to Burma and got into Burma, did not know the language, did not have any food, did not have any shelter, did not know anyone. We were by ourselves. And she said this, I cannot tell you the dismay and alarm that filled me. She said, I stood there with my son. I didn't know I had food, money, anything. How are we going to live? What are we going to do? How do we get home? She said, fear began to creep up on her. And she said, I did two things. I won't quote her. The first thing I, I did was to cast out fear. The only fear a Christian should entertain is the fear of sin. All other fears are from the enemy to confuse and weaken us. 
So she knelt down, spread her heart before the Lord, and said, I refuse to be afraid, and I ask him to cast that fear out of my heart. It was in prayer. She said, God, I refuse to be, I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be afraid from the intimidation of my government or politically correct crowd or the woke crowd in America today. Will you join me in that one? I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be afraid of them. She said, I refuse it. God, take it out of my heart. And then she said this. Then she prayed. When God took that fear out of her heart, she then said, I then prayed for light for the next step. Light for the next step. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, I, I don't know how God's going to solve it, but give me light for the next thing I have to do. Light for the next step. And God showed her something to do, and she did it. And the next thing, and the next. He didn't show her how she'd get out, but she gave her light every day to get her through it. Write down Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord, and I seek the Lord. Get Bend the knee. Put it in God's hands. Here's the second thing. When fearful times come, raise the shield. What's the shield? Ephesians chapter 6, Paul says, we have a shield of faith. It's time to raise the shield. I believe that so many times we as Christians want God to take care of things without faith. <laughs> well, God, why aren't you taking care of me? Well, where's your faith? When you raise the shield of faith, that's when God begins to activate. I ran across something interesting the other day. I had uh, happened to be reading about uh, Olympic uh, training our Olympic athletes. And uh, one Olympic athlete, an ice skater, shared something her coach told her before she went on the ice. I've often wondered what these coaches tell these professional people to, before they go in competition. And she said, this is what the coach said to me. She said, the coach, I looked at the coach, she said, said I'm, I'm scared. And the coach said, no, you're not scared, you're nervous. And she said, what's the difference between nervous and scared? They're the same thing. He said, they're not the same thing. Nervous and scared are not the same thing. He said, I'll give you an example. Let's suppose you go out to eat at a restaurant and you order a $100 meal. You might be nervous ordering that much food. $100 meal. Could you imagine a $100 meal at Bojangles? <laughs> Fill up your trunk. So you order a $100 meal, okay? Well, you're nervous. But if you've got $100 in your pocket, you're not scared because you know you can cover that $100 meal. He said, let me tell you what scared is. Scared is when you order a $100 meal and you don't have any money in your pocket. That's when you're scared. And the skater said it clicked and she got it. He was saying, you don't need to be scared unless you don't have anything to offer. But because you're such a good skater, you've got something to offer. You're just nervous. Get out there and do what you know how to do. And she went out there and won the competition. So what you've got to do is raise the shield of faith. Write down Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. All those who are incensed against you will be as nothing and less than nothing. And he goes on to say, I will hold you. Don't be afraid. God will not take care of you if you don't have faith. You've got to raise the shield of faith. Third, you've got to apply the cure. You say, Pastor, what is the cure? Jesus applied the cure. He said, not my will be done, but yours be done. Here's the cure 
for fear. You ready? Lordship. You see, fear happens when Satan wants to be Lord of your life. Fear happens when the flesh wants to rule your life. Fear happens when the world wants to tell you what to do and think. The solution is lordship. Jesus said, take this cup, Father, but you're Lord of this moment. And by the way, here's the refrigerator quote for those of you visiting today. They're in the offering uh, baskets as you leave at the doors. And as you put in those massively big checks, pick up one of these. And here's a refrigerator quote. It sticks to your refrigerator for this week. A person of faith does not look at what what happens to them, but at what God wants to do through them. You don't look at what's happening to you. You ask, what does God want to do through me? When you cannot control a situation, extol the one who is the Lord of that situation. Lordship. Let me tell you something about lordship. Here's a little trick I'm going to teach you. I learned it this week. Somebody said, if you'll take the 23rd Psalm and pray over each line of the 23rd Psalm, such as, the Lord is my shepherd. All right, start praying for the Lord to shepherd you through it. Submit yourself to his shepherding. I will not want. Are you wanting things that are not his will? He leads me beside still waters. Are you going to quiet your spirit? And green pastures, are you feeding your soul? Start praying for each line of Psalm 23. Apply the cure of his lordship. If you've prayed and put it in his hands, then you've got to let him be lord of it. Here's the fourth thing I want you to realize. Share the burden. Share the burden. And that's why you need a church. Some of you here today, you're living so low Christianity without a church. There is no such thing in the Bible as a solo Christian. Write this down. Shared, excuse me, fear shared is fear reduced. Fear shared is fear reduced. If you have somebody to share it with, You reduce it. And what did Jesus do? Jesus took his disciples and said, pray with me. You have anybody to pray with and to share it with? That's why we need Sunday school. That's why we need other believers. That's why you need a church. You need to build trusted connections. And I'm going to ask you to come down and join this church. Is this church perfect? No. Somebody said uh, uh, of the church, Uh, Christianity would be easy if it wasn't for people. Somebody else said, I love the church. It's people I can't stand. I want to tell you something. This church is the body of Christ. You need the church. And those of you from anybody, I know a couple from Alabama. I got an Alabama story. Y'all ever heard of Bear Bryant? Famous football coach at Alabama. One of his assistants uh, was Gene Stallings. Gene left Bear Bryant, became the the coach at Texas A&M. And when he got there, he still had a friendship with Bear Bryant. And he said Bear Bryant called him one day. And uh, it's the beginning of the football season. Bear Bryant called Gene Stallings and said, Gene, uh, we're going to have a terrible year this year. Worst thing uh, that I've ever seen has happened to our our school, my football team. He said, uh, my football team... Worst thing that's happened to them is a group called FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He said, Fellowship of Christian Athletes is ruining my football team. This is Barry Bryant speaking. He said, these players are hugging each other, loving each other, and they won't hit anybody. He said, FCA is going to kill our football team. At the end of the season, according to Gene Stallings, Barry Bryant had a terrific season. Huge success. He said, Bear called him back at the end of the season, and he said, Stallings, you know what the best thing that happened to our team this year? He says, it's FCA. That fellowship of Christian athletes, 
He said, it's brought on such a oneness and a closeness to our team. They were unified because of the influence of, of their Christian love for one another. And it was a witness to Bear Bryant. The people he thought would divide his team actually made his team because they built their hearts together. Shared, fear that shared is fear reduced. You need a fellowship of believers. And that's what we're here for. Share the burden. And here's the last thing. Face the battle. Jesus walked out and let his betrayer kiss him. He walked out and faced that crowd that was there to arrest him. He drank the cup. And there are times when God has a cup for you to drink. But I want you to listen to this. That cup that Jesus drank on the cross was your sin and my sin. He drank the cup. That was the purpose of the cup. And let me just say this. If God puts something in front of you that maybe unnerves you, it has a purpose. And anything that God allows on purpose in your life, he will give you the power to get through it. As Jesus accepted the purpose of the cross, he got the power to endure the cross. And there's a connection between living his purpose and getting his power. Now let me write this down. Fear says give up. God says man up. Fear says you can't do it. Listen, courage is not the absence of the fear. It is the conquest of it. Now, preachers, we're always telling you to do something. You know, when we get here, we say, I like to tell people, this is what you need to do. I want to tell you one thing I want you to do. I want you to get up every morning and say, I'm going to do one thing today that scares me. Maybe it's, you're scared to go to a counselor. Maybe you're scared to say, I love you. Maybe you're scared to say, please forgive me. I blew it. I messed up. Maybe you're afraid to, to say some things to your parents that you need to say or to a loved one. Do something that scares you that God wants you to do. Do that one thing every day. Don't let fear paralyze you. He pressed through his fear for you. Now what are you going to do with your fear for him? He went through that fear to die for you. What have you got to go through for him? In 1939, England was on the edge of war with Germany. They were unprepared. You've heard of Dunkirk. Happened just after the war broke out. They were devastated. King George the, the Fourth gave a radio address on New Year's Eve, or excuse me, Christmas Eve, the Christmas Eve speech. If you've ever seen the movie, The King's Speech, how I many have you seen that movie, King's Speech? Yeah, it's a great movie, I like that. King's Speech, some words are bad, but I like the movie anyway. He gives this speech to encourage England, we can win this war under certain conditions. And the last thing he says is a poem that was written by Lewis Haskins. I want to read it to you. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. And he shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. I'm going into the darkness and I don't know what to do. Get, give me light. Show me the way. He said, no. We don't know what this war is going to be, England. 
But one thing we must do as we face this coming darkness is put our hand in the hand of God. And I would say to you, I don't know what the darkness is that you are facing. But you're not going to make it without putting your hand in his hand. And I'm going to ask you today to come down to this altar. Wherever you're afraid, say, God, I'm laying it before you. I'm taking your hand. I'm going to share this burden with you my church I'm going to be a person of faith and I'm going to lift the shield of faith believing you and I'm going to live faithfully if you're here today and you've never taken up that shield of faith I want to ask you put your life in his hand right now would you do that if you can live today without regret tomorrow without fear you're on your way And when you have his hand in your life, you have all you need to not be afraid. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for our time together today. I pray this will be a fearless year because we've gone through a fearful time. Not knowing what COVID would do, limiting our lives, teenagers having to be home all the time. Moms and dads worried about their children, their grandparents, loved ones. But Lord, perfect love casts out fear. And your word says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And may we live this year fearlessly. Some may be here with some regrets in their lives. And I pray that right now they'll put those in your hands and press forward fearlessly. Some are concerned about the darkness of tomorrow. May they take your hand today. And Father, if there's somebody here that needs to take your hand, they've been walking through life without you, I pray right now somebody would just Say, I want that hand in my life. I want the hand of God on my life. And I pray that somebody will say, Lord, I'll take your hand today. If you'll walk with me, I'll walk with you. Today, I'll make Jesus Lord, believing that he pressed through that fear, died on that cross for my sins, rose from the dead to give me life. And I surrender my life to him who gave it all up for me. And I promise today in this church, I'm going to live for Jesus, knowing what he did for for me. And I'm going to live fearlessly for him, victoriously for him, holy for him. Come into my life, save me as I give my life to Christ. And as I take his hand today, in Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer with me maybe for the first time never been baptized before would you come down here and say pastor i i'm I'm taking jesus hand today if you're here today and you've had a fear that's just been ruling your life and you need to put it in his hand come down to this altar christian lift up that shield of faith and release that into his hand today if you're here today you don't have a church fellowship You need to join this church. Would you come today and make me a part of Cedar Falls Baptist Church? And let us be your faith family. We'll grow together in faith. Come right now. I'm here to receive you if you'll come while we sing. Let's stand together. Please come.
You may be seated for just a second. Let me introduce to you Landon Frazee. I think everybody knows. Come on, Landon, stand up. His dad can stand with him. And mom, if you can come down here too, mom. Frazee has been in this church a long time. And uh, he's come to say he wants to be baptized. He's trusted Christ as his Savior. Believes Jesus died and rose again. And so Landon is coming to, uh, for baptism. To hear a motion, we accept him on his baptism as a member of this church. All in favor, we say amen. amen. Also, Rahima Bond, come on, you want to stand right here? I, she, uh, she's filling out paperwork. But she, uh, she's a, a, a Baptist from over in Bass, North Carolina, back over here now, in God's country of Fayetteville. But, uh, but uh, she's, been, she's trusted Christ as Savior and has been baptized by immersion. Coming on transfer of a letter from Bass Baptist Church. To hear a motion, we accept her upon receipt of a letter from that church. All in favor, would you signify by saying amen? And we want you to welcome her. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll let you get back to that in just a moment. Please come up and thank. She's going to finish filling out that paperwork. And I know you'll want to speak to the phrases. We're excited about landing, aren't we? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I know. It'll be great. Let's all stand together as we close our service out today. By the way, tell all your friends to be here next week, every week. We're getting ready for Easter. And next week we're going to deal with Jesus stumbling under the cross. How that sometimes we stumble under our crosses, don't we? Out of weariness. We're going to talk about that. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. It's been a great day of the Lord. Good to be back in Sunday school and in your house. And as we leave here today, let the joy of being with you continue in our homes, our hearts, our automobiles as we leave. And the rest of this day, as we thank you for once again reminding us of your love in Jesus, in his name. Amen.